Welcome back, boys and girls. Today, you're going to learn about the Anishabek in the past. And remember, the Anishabek are just the first humans in Michigan. And they are actually the three fires. And remember, the three fires are made up of three different tribes that have came together. So we are going to learn about the Anishabek in the past as a whole. So these are things that all three of the three fires, all three of those tribes did. So let's look and take a look at how they were way back before any other humans were in Michigan. So where does the history of people in Michigan begin? Well, I want you to think if you've ever been someplace um, that talks about the past, it might you might have heard that people came to Michigan to work in factories, and that's true. And some people still work in factories today. We have many factories, especially car plants. Maybe one of your parents even work in one of those factories. Also, um, when they came to Michigan, people built log cabins. Some of the settlers built log cabins to live here because we have lots of trees. So that was what they used to build their homes. However, if we want to talk about the Anishabek, we need to go back much further in time, long before there were factories, long before there were log cabins in Michigan. The Anishabek are some of the very first people to have lived in Michigan. They lived in Michigan since time immemorial. That means way before anyone else came to Michigan. Before there were roads, before there were houses, um, before anything. The forests and waterways of Michigan have always been very important to the Anishabek. Think about the geography of Michigan, all right? So I want you to think about the geography of Michigan. We've talked about the geography. Um, what do we have in Michigan as far as our land goes? We have a lot of what? We have water, a lot of lakes and rivers. We're surrounded by lakes, a lot of woods. What else do we have? So think about it. We have our waterways. We have our landforms, our climate, plants, and animals. Pause the video and I want you to think about what examples you can think of that um, our state of Michigan has as far as any of these things go. Yeah, did you think of maybe deer and rabbit? Um, some of the plants maybe are white pine. Our climate is warm in the summer and cold in the winter. Our landforms, we have many hills that were carved out by glaciers, many lakes and rivers. Think about all of that. That impacts the culture or how we live, right? It impacts our food, our clothing, our homes, our transportation, and our knowledge. So think about Michigan as a whole. Our clothing, we wear shorts in the summer and we wear very warm clothes in the winter because it's cold. Our homes are built um, so we can open windows and cool them off in the summertime but then close it back up and, a lot, and heat it in the winter because we get cold. Um, so all of these things impact the culture that we have now and they definitely impacted the culture and the way that the Native Americans lived long ago. So here are some questions we're going to think of. Um, so if you have this sheet, you can pause and answer these right now and then we will check them together. If you don't have the sheet, that's okay. You're gonna answer them in your head as we go. I have some slides with these questions on it. So the first question, is what kind of transportation do you think the Anishabek used to travel through the Great Lake region? Put your answer on your investigation sheet if you have it. So what kind of transportation do you think they used? Do you think they used cars, horses, or canoes? If you chose canoe, 
You are correct. The Anishinaabek traveled along the waterways in Michigan by canoe. It was faster than walking. And cars, they have not even been invented yet. Also, canoes, they're strong. They were strong and lightweight, so they could carry them with them. They were about 36, they were 36 feet, and they could carry up to 6,000 pounds. So think about that. Anything that they needed to um, travel with, they could put in that canoe. They were very strong, and they were made out of birch. What type of homes do you think the Anishabek lived in a long time ago? Do you think they lived in a pueblo, a teepee, or a wigwam? If you said wigwam, you are correct. Again, the wigwam is made um, by covering a wood frame, so it's made all out of wood, um, and they covered it with birch bark, often with birch bark. Sometimes they covered it with animal hides um, or other things they could find. But birch bark was often used the most. And these are birch trees, boys and girls. And you can see them growing in the woods, um, in nature, all throughout Michigan. The Anishinaabek used birch trees for many other things besides covering their homes. They used them to build baskets, um, to make items they needed, bowls. And here's some pictures of those. Here's a birch bark basket a birch bowl, and like I said, they used them for their canoes. So what do you think the Anishinaabek ate a long time ago and still eat today? Actually, we still eat this today. Um, sturgeon, wild rice, or biscuits? Which one do you think they ate? Well, if you said sturgeon, you are correct. Um, sturgeon have been one of the most important fish in the Anishabek, um culture, and they actually call it the Anishabumawin, and um, they liked these sturgeon. They called them the chief fish or the grandfather of all fish um, because they saw this fish as the leader of the fish and the oldest as well as the largest. So you can find sturgeon in our Great Lakes around Michigan. They also ate, there were two right answers, wild rice. Wild rice has been known to the Anishinaabek as manumen, which means good berry, and it's still an important food, store, food source. Wild rice was grown in water, so the Anishinaabek used canoes to harvest the rice in the fall. The Anishinaabek moved seasonally to different locations based on the activities they were doing. So they would take their wigwams and they would take the bark off. They were kind of like tents. Sometimes they would leave the poles and they would come back to them. Um, so they would actually move in the seasons depending on what they needed to do. So think about it. If you have this sheet, you can put your number right in the little circle. Um, some of the things they needed to do was collect sap from maple trees to make syrup, harvest wild rice, grow beans, squash, and corn, and then they trapped animals. And one thing they really trapped was beaver for their um, for many reasons. So if you think they did those things in the fall, winter, spring, or summer, you can put one, two, three, four in that circle. If you don't have the sheet, that's okay because the questions are on my next slide. So in the springtime, they actually moved to what they called their sugar camps and they collected sap from maple trees and made maple syrup and sugar. Um, some moved to their garden sites because they had to plant seeds in the spring to get their gardens ready. And then here is an example of a woman who is making maple syrup. And see, she taps these trees, puts the little um, like straw in there, and then the sap drips into these baskets and then she puts them in these containers and it's over a fire and they boil it down until they get syrup. It takes a lot of sap, a lot. So the, she would not just have one tree tapped, she would have as many trees in that area tapped as she could. 
In the summertime, the Anishabek returned to their summer villages and they tended their crops like corn, beans, and squash. So they made sure their gardens and their farms were were well cared for all summer long. And then they would harvest those and some of the things like berries actually um, could be harvested in the summer. So they would harvest those berries to eat, but they would also dry them. Have you ever had dried fruit? It's like dehydrated fruit. Well, they didn't have refrigerators to keep those things um, cool and fresh. So they would have to dry them to make sure that they could eat those all winter long. In the fall, the Anishapak were harvesting so that's what they did in the in the fall they would harvest their corn um they would travel to the other areas to their waterways and harvest wild rice and then others would hunt and fish and then last in the winters it would get very cold so they would move away from the lakes and they would probably go someplace where um, they were protected from the wind and the winter weather probably further into the woods and they would spend their winters ice fishing, trapping animals like beaver and hunting animals like deer. And this was their time where they would sit around and they would tell stories. So if you answered this, um, in the winter, you would have four for trapping animals. Um, in the spring, you would have put one collecting sap from maple trees. The summer was three growing beans, squash, and corn. And the fall was two harvesting wild rice. However, there are some things they did all year long. So all year they would gather firewood and water, and all year they would hunt, or hunt fish and gather what they could. And they would share their knowledge through ceremonies. Um, the Native Americans had a lot of ceremonies and they did a lot of storytelling and they always made sure that their knowledge was passed down from generation to generation. Some important parts of the Anishabek culture are those birch baskets. That's really an important part of their culture. The maple syrup, that's um, we learned how to do that from them. Growing corn and other crops. Their wigwam, they are known for their wigwam and their birch bark canoes, um, gathering wild rice and fishing. I remember I said they liked to pass their culture and their knowledge down from generation to generation. One thing that they um, really believed was that you had to give respect to everyone, all human beings, and all things created. You respected nature, and you respected each other, and you respected yourself. Um, and then I am going to try it. This is a Native American word for respect. Mana de Tawan. And if you know how to say that and I said it wrong, you are welcome to correct me. And then the other thing that they shared was wisdom. It was important to gain knowledge from learning from experiences. All right, so boys and girls, you know a little bit now, a little bit more about the Anishabek. Um, in my next video, we're going to um, talk about one of the three fires. And so I want you to watch my next video. It has a lot of important text details, and we'll go through that article together. All right, boys and girls.